Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have a real-time watercolor tutorial. Here are our two finished pieces, and this was one watercolor. You can see I did a little doodling on one. I'm excited to share with you, so let's jump right in. I'm Ingrid Blackburn, and we're gonna start off with some cold press watercolor paper. This video is loaded with tips and information all the way through, and I've got some very, very really cool, helpful tips all the way to the end. Starting off with the Silver Black Velvet Number 8 Round Brush, and I'm working on some Cold Press Strathmore 400 series paper. Very inexpensive 12 sheet pad. This is actually half a sheet of regular copy paper A2 size, so it's five and a half by eight and a half. You can see that, which is perfect for two card fronts, by the way, or a small watercolor. It's not very intimidating, which I really love, and it's under five bucks. Can't go wrong with that. I've got some rose matter, very uh, beautiful translucent paint. This is by Schmincke. Schmincke is one of my preferred brands that I love to use. I love the quality. I've just kind of collected them a little bit over the years. And you can see I'm just using a stroke that is just coming towards me. I should really say that this entire exercise is meant to just really be playing. I'm not trying to do anything specific other than create some flowers. You can see there's no real shape here, maybe just a loose floral shape, but I, like I said, I'm not going per for perfection. And you know, I, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I am a perfectionist. So this is really more an exercise and just some creativity. The goal here with these initial strokes is just to kind of create a loose shape with some real, real light layers. This is gonna be our base layer and almost kind of like the back of the flowers. So I wanted this to be really light. It really wasn't as light as I wanted to. I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more of a wet, watery brush. We're just kind of laying down an initial foundation. You can see the shapes are going a little to the right, a little to the left. That last flower that I had done before this one was really more of a bud, and we're gonna add one more uh, in an empty spot. I'm just kind of stretching some of these, adding a little bit more. I'm using an extremely wet brush, just because I want, remember this is a wet on dry project. So that means that we have not really wet the paper beyond just adding a few little water droplets in the very beginning. and I really those droplets were tiny. It was just meant to spread out a little tiny bit of water as an aid for when I um, drop down some color. You can see I'm coming back in here with a relatively clean brush, just adding water, just kind of extending this lighter layer into more of a fading out layer. I, I really didn't want it to have any harsh look to it. So I wanted to have a little bit more of an organic feel. And that's why I'm kind of trying to blend out some of those edges there at the top. I'm trying also not to add a little too much water because I didn't want everything to kind of bleed out at that moment. You know, that uh, bottom flower, the, if you look kind of in the middle, that was really the look that I was going for. So I'm working to kind of achieve that with some of the other ones. And that first flower there, that one on the left, you can see how I have sort of a little bit of a cauliflower bloom in there. I have a little bit too much water in there and it's moving that color a little bit more, stopping it at the area where it started to dry a little bit. And I'm not gonna, normally I would worry about that, but because this is the under layer, I'm not gonna worry about it. We are gonna deposit a lot more paint on top. So that's really not gonna be an issue. And same thing with that flower that I was just working on. You can see how I'm starting to get a little bit of harsh line. And that is because I have a little bit too much water coming up against a dry area. So that's okay, we're gonna work on it. And I'm just gonna kind of show you how to deal with some of those things as you're working with this. Again, this is not meant to be perfection. You saw me hold up a tube of paint and that is Mission Permanent Rose. This is a beautiful, beautiful shade. You can see it's significantly darker than the rose matter that we had been using as the lightest layer. I like to work in layers when I work in watercolor and it's just kind of fun. You need to get used to finding where the happy medium is between water, paint, and layers. And this is a great exercise, this entire exercise. And if it doesn't turn out, if it's not perfect, that's fine. 
This is actually the second time that I did this. The first time I did it off camera without filming. And I thought it was such a cool project. I wanted to duplicate it for you. And I thought that it would be very helpful to have it in real time. Normally I speed up so many of my videos and I know quite a few of you have requested that I have a little bit more real time uh, videos and process videos. So that's what this is. If you would like to see this tutorial in a completely sped up version that is obviously much shorter, definitely tell me in the comments below. You know, watercolor is such a fun, relaxing medium and just real wonderful hobby. I, I got into it initially because my oldest wanted me to create a watercolor piece of art for her wedding for everybody to sign. And it was the only thing she actually asked me to do for the wedding <laughs> and wasn't going to do say no of course not of course she asked me all the crafty things that I knew how to do watercolor was not one of them so I learned how to watercolor I took several classes online and in person at art stores and I really enjoyed it I am self-taught with the exception of those few classes uh, I've really learned a lot online as we all can today which is what you're doing right now enough that I've actually taught watercolor classes online and in person. And this is really, today's project, I cannot stress enough that this is really more about you sitting down and just creating. And part of leaving it real time is for you to be able to sit down and follow along with me should you want to. Uh, you saw me swipe through there and you can see I have a couple streaks. I just added some water, it was getting a little dark for me again was not going for perfection i wasn't going to worry about the water wicking color away or anything like that now if i was working on a botanical or something like that where i wanted to be a lot more precise i would be a lot more careful i would be very aware and cognizant of everything that i am doing this is not that project <laughs> this is really more of creating some shapes adding some colors um, creating some abstract kind of florals and then at the end we're gonna do some doodling over it the doodling parts actually gonna be in a separate video because this video is so long in itself uh, I didn't want to have it be you know hours long so I thought it would be fun to do them both and that way if you're not into the doodling portion of it you don't have to watch that as well so you can see here we're just starting to add more layers i'm still using the mission permanent rose and i you know it's really funny i got that tube as a freebie when i went into an art store and i had bought several paints they gave me that tube i love this color this is a beautiful color and i think that at the time it was a relatively new company i could be wrong um, and i i've had this for several years but you can see that paint really does go a long way the half pans that you see in my um, china palette there, and that's what I like to use as a palette. I like to use a china plate, it washes up super easy. I can also let things dry and come back to them. It's a nice big flat space. I bought that when I was in Germany uh, last summer, and I bought myself a couple of those. It's just really nice and easy to work with. You can see I'm just dropping down an additional layer. This is what I do in watercolor. I like to build up with layers on layers and that's why I like to keep things um, relatively light. This to me is feeling dark. Uh, I was I was actually wanting it to be a little lighter initially, but it turned out beautiful. And that's part of the process with watercolor. It looks so different when it's wet than when it starts to dry. So because of that, I personally, and I don't know if you do too, you'll have to tell me in the comments if you go through this yourself, sometimes you start to overwork it because you're overthinking it. I definitely did that at one point and I'll talk about that when we get to that point. And sometimes you just have to kind of trust the process. I've said this numerous times, especially in the classes that I've taught, Every project goes through an ugly duckling phase. And right now it's definitely in an ugly duckling phase. I'm sitting here looking at this and going, what was I thinking? But when you see the final pro final result, uh, you're gonna be like, wow, I can't even believe that it started in one place and ended up something somewhere totally different. The key is to not overwork it in between. So you can see here, it was looking really kind of haggard and rough there at the bottom. So I was just kind of smoothing it out, adding a little bit more. And every time you do that, you're going into a new area. 
you know, you could run the risk of creating a little bit of a harsh line there, um, as you see on the largest flower. And we'll work with that. You can see I'm starting to add a little more there, wanting that to wick up to it so that it doesn't seem like such a hard contrast. And you can see I've also left a lot of light spaces. I talk a lot about light and dark in art. It's really important to have the light with the dark because if you don't have light, the dark can't shine. The dark overpowers. So it's important sometimes to leave little highlights. For example, if you look at the bottom left corner of this piece, you can see a bud there and I've got almost like a white spot right in the middle of that. It was so crucial that I left that because it really kind of helped make that bud. And the same thing in some of these other flowers, you want to leave some light there, even in the middle, because we're going to end up adding things like stamens with a lighter color, like a yellow or an orange. And if you don't have that, then that color can't shine. So sometimes it's okay to leave light. Basically what you're doing is you're creating a highlight and uh, that's really important in watercolor. You may have noticed uh, throughout this project that sometimes when I'm dropping down another layer, it does it starts to look a little more kind of, of a harsher color transition, maybe a little bit too forced, uh, not so natural of a blend. But then as I continue to work along the project and you look back at it, then all of a sudden it starts to look a little more washed out and be a little bit more blended in. And that's because I am dropping color onto an area that is not yet dry. If the area has started to dry as you see me start to reach up like I had just done in that, that previous flower, dropping color a little bit higher up on the petals. Because I was wanting to leave layers, layers of really light colors, medium tones, and then the darker ones, the higher up you go, those areas haven't really necessarily been worked on for a while, so that color's gonna stay you know, it's not really gonna be blended in, but as we're still working on the base, the base is rather wet. So the color, even though we're adding it uh, towards the end part of the flower, that part starts to blend in because it's still rather wet. And that's really important in watercolor. Sometimes you have to allow something to dry to see what it looks like before you can truly properly add more shadow and darker darker tones to your watercolor. So here we've finished with the permanent rose and that was the mission color. And you can see we added several layers and our flowers are really kind of starting to take shape. We have real light layers, we have mediums, we have darks. Now I'm gonna add some quinacridone violet and you saw me reach into one of my pans. These are my Schmincke pans and I truly cannot talk highly enough about Schmincke. Schmincke is a great artist brand. They have also st some student grade colors. Mine are all the artist colors. I found that in watercolor, it's really a waste to start with the student line, start with the professional. It's a little bit more pricey, buy them as you can. That's what I did uh, when I was living in Germany. Schmincke is a German brand, but quite honestly, it is one of the better brands. They have beautiful colors. You will not be disappointed. You can see here, some of the purple was a little too much for me. So I'm adding a little bit more of a watery brush. You can see me cleaning, cleaning my brush off there and dabbing it onto the paper towel. When I dab it onto the paper towel, I'm just removing just a slight amount of water. I got that tip from a watercolor artist. Uh, I had taken a long cruise uh, across the Atlantic Ocean and I was really lucky that they had an amazing watercolor artist from England on board. And I got to take watercolor classes every single day. It was amazing. I loved it. Uh, I learned so much. Now I'm actually adding some Paris blue. And this is one of my favorite shades of blue by Schmincke. It's a real big injection of color right here. But sometimes when you add blue and reds together or pinks, they create the most beautiful violet. This was actually... Not the intention when I first added it, but I didn't freak out. And that's what's really great about watercolor. Watercolor is so forgiving. You can come in, you can fix it, you can change it, you can play with it, you can lift it off as you'll see me do here. 
um, I was like, I was very worried that I was going to start to really overwork my project here because I felt like I had made a big mistake, but it ended up not being such a big mistake. And we're going to go through the process together. So I've got some of the rose matter, which was the lightest pink that I was using a rose color. And you can see me dipping it a little bit more into the Paris blue. And what I was working on was kind of transforming that a little bit more into a rosy purple. And it worked really well. This flower right here, I really was not liking what was going on there. Uh, it was feeling very, very overworked for me. So I'm gonna lift that off. You can see these bottom two. Anything that's really wet, I was able to just put a clean, and I cannot stress that enough, clean paper towel down and just lift that right out. And while it is still damp, I'm now coming back in with more of the rose matter and that just kind of fixed that right away. I needed a little bit more of the two patent. You can see I don't add a crazy amount there. There, it's not necessary. You can add a little dollop. Um, I didn't know if I would end up cleaning that plate. I didn't want to leave too much behind. And just coming in with some really strong color now, just to add that since I had removed a little bit. Now, since these areas are rather wet, it's important that they start to dry in order for me to really move forward. So I'm just adding just a little tiny bit of purple here just to get these two flowers that I had lifted some color out caught up. And then we're going to actually move on to the next step and allow some of these sections to dry so that we can kind of work on them if we need to or just move on. So next up, we're going to add a little bit to that. I'm really loving how this is looking. It's really starting to take shape. They're loose florals. Uh, they've got some depth to them. I'm coming in with a clean brush and it's really funny. I did, was only working with one little jar of water. I usually work with two, one being totally clean. So it was interesting that I didn't. You saw me just kind of wipe the heel of my brush off and I apologize that this part's off camera um, onto a dry piece of paper towel and that helps remove some of the water if you want to have a little more control just doing little tiny wicks. I'm trying to get into what I interpret being the middle of the flower. And you can see sometimes it's over pink, sometimes it's on a white area. And these are little stamens. The thing to remember here, and this was a mistake that I had made in my first one, I got a little too stamen happy on one flower in my initial one, uh, on my very first project, not on this one. So you just wanna, you know, start with fewer. You can always add more. <laughs> it's a lot harder to take away, you know, color over color, especially when you start to layer things like yellow over pinks. So just add a couple to where you feel the center is. It's okay if there's pink there, because remember, you're gonna, it's almost like you're looking into the flower. So you may be seeing back petals and front petals as well. And if you're not 100% certain, start with one and finish the process on one before moving forward. Because remember at this point, we're kind of allowing this to dry a little bit so that we can move on. And you can kind of see uh, the light shining on some of that. Now for the very tips of the stamen, I'm using my all time favorite orange, which is Translucent Orange by Schmenke. I have several different oranges from different companies and this one by far is the best. So even if you're using, you know, Windsor Newton paints or anything else, get the Schmenka translucent orange. It is gorgeous, 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 true orange and very, very translucent. They're not lying with that part. And you can see just the slightest little dot. I mean, really not trying to overdo this part. Just one little teeny tiny dots for the tips of the stamens. Uh, but it's a nice contrast with the pink, the orange, and the yellow, and it really works and looks very natural and organic. And I really love how all these florals are starting to come together. So now that we're kind of adding the last couple little orange spots, our painting is starting to dry a little bit and you can kind of start to see where some of the more harsher lines are, maybe where you need to drop in a little bit, some more of a darker tone. I'm holding my hand up, kind of visualizing what it's gonna look like uh, when I cut it in half. 
and you can see that one those couple areas that I'm pointing to they're feeling a little overworked uh, and part of it also is because it's not dry and that's me not trusting the process so I cannot stress enough that sometimes you do need to let it go a little bit further so what I'm doing here now is I'm just working with a just a clean wet brush and coming back in uh, to just kind of smooth out some of those areas where I feel like I have a little bit more of a harsher line. And what happens when you get a harsh line, it's really, again, it's water coming up against an area that is dry. And because there are two opposites, it kind of leaves, deposits a little bit extra paint there right on the edge and that gives you that harsh line. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of water. You can see I'm kind of wicking some of that or keeping some of that water onto the towel rather than coming in with a completely wet brush. I don't want to add too much water, but at the same time, I'm working on softening up those lines. So by coming in with a clean brush that has a little tiny bit of wetness to it and going over an area that's dry, the goal is to just soften the edge. If I deposit too much water, then it's going to bloom out. I'm adding too much water to a dry area. So it's really a balance. And that comes with time. It comes with play. It comes with just practicing. Again, that's what this project is. This project is for you to have some fun, to relax, to enjoy. If it doesn't go right, you can lop off part of it. If you know you end up overworking it, that's okay. You'll understand what overworking is then. Uh, so I encourage you, if you feel like you're overworking a project, leave part of it un intentionally not overworked so that when it dries, you can see what the difference is so that you know better for next time. Again, right here, I'm softening. So I'm also removing because I'm coming in with a clean brush and also you can it, you can't see but I'm actually dabbing it off I'm putting it in the water dabbing it off onto the paper towel and that's how my paper towel is getting so wet coming in with a little bit more of a drier brush removing some of the water there and some of the paint because it was feeling a little heavy that's a great way to help remove some excess water if you have excess water is coming in with a dry brush because the dry brush will sop up some of that you don't want to come in with too dry a brush because then you'll take everything away. So again, it's that balance. Now, if you have an area like these bottom two flowers are a little too wet, you can see I very lightly, ever so slightly dabbed a clean dry towel over it just to remove a little bit of excess water. I wasn't quite getting it with the brush, but I felt like I needed to stop it from moving. So that was what I did there. Now I'm coming in again with a clean semi-wet uh, mostly dry brush just coming in and just kind of working on some of those lines I was smoothing it out and kind of working on the harsh line that was being created at the bottom and again that happened because you have that real defined um, area of dry right beyond all the color and remember I took there was so much water that I took it away with paper towel so it was starting to create a harsh line so I needed to kind of scrub that a little bit with my brush and uh, work out some of the harshness. And that's what I'm doing here on the bottoms of some of these flowers. Now, again, you know, I still haven't added the green to this. I haven't added the stems or the base of the flowers. So even if you have an area that's a little, you know, uh, kind of funky or weird, don't forget you're still adding that. So you're still gonna kind of cover that up. So that's not how it's really gonna just be presented. You'll have a little bit more tying the whole piece together. So here, because I had done a little bit of work and uh, moved some things around, I wanted to deposit one final little darker bit of uh, permanent rose. And that's just kind of to that bottom. And that's gonna help because if I had washed anything away, this is just really gonna finally tie everything together. So this is really kind of a finishing touch here. This piece is really coming together. It's going a little bit beyond the ugly duckling phase and I can, start to kind of see the finished product and I'm having a lot of fun with it just kind of adding those last little touches before taking a heat tool to it now I'm not using an embossing gun and if you don't have any heat tool whatsoever you can use a hair dryer this is the heat it tool by Ranger it can emboss um, the it doesn't blow in a direction like a hair dryer does. 
uh, you can see here the heat tool is actually on and at the same time I'm kind of scrubbing with a slightly damp brush some of those areas that I feel are a little too harsh and what my goal is is to soften them up but yet dry at the same time you want to be careful though because I don't want to damage my brush this is a um, black velvet brush and I'll be honest it's not the cheapest brush and I do love this brush it's amazing uh, you can use any brush that you have obviously the better quality you have you know you'll have a little bit more fun but it's not necessary really loving this I have one flower that has a couple of little cauliflower bloomish type spots on it and I am going to show you how to deal with that but that's coming up a little bit later uh, we have a lot of things that we're doing in between so next up we are going to move on to the next step I'm so thrilled with how these flowers are looking we're going to add some stems and some leaves so that first one was sap green also by Schmincke here we have a yellow green uh, this is also a great little color I love the two you know it's it's hard to just use one green for me uh, and this right here is Payne's gray I don't ever use black Payne's gray is about as dark as I get I love Payne's gray because if you need to darken something like I'm adding it to the sap green it just creates a much darker hue and if you don't have Payne's gray in your arsenal it is one color that it is something that I highly highly recommend that you have uh, so I'm just going to add just a little tiny bit here and it's funny the first two that I'm adding here are a little too watery uh, and they get a little faded and I'll show you how I, I remedy that uh, and just trying to keep it really you know dainty because uh, these are actual buds so they're not large flowers so their stems would not be very big at this point so trying to keep a little bit of realism at the same time with this free-flowing water watercolor uh, floral so here I'm also leaving a little bit of light you can see I left a little bit of light I don't need to be so perfect you can go zigzag across to create your bases on your flowers uh, you can create little leaves at the base whatever your heart desires at that moment uh, and right here you'll see at the bottom oh I got a little too wide I'm gonna show you how I fix that again clean dry part lift it right off there's a little bit of green left behind there I could come over it with a clean wet brush to remove that at this point because it didn't really stain the paper but it's okay I want to put some leaves over it so I'm not gonna worry about it all that much adding just that little tiny bit there to the bottom edge it's important it's important to add those little tiny touches it helps tie everything together this being the one of the larger flowers I actually added a large base there uh, didn't feel it needed to go further down but I, you can see there's a break there and that is actually a real light layer of pink uh, I ended up not bringing it through later on but you can see here I'm just gonna add this last one and look at those first couple that we did those have already dried because they were real light layers you can see how much lighter they are in in tone versus everything else uh, that's the difference between wet watercolor and dry watercolor sometimes you really need things to dry to get the full effect of what they're gonna look like they're the most vibrant when they're wet and sometimes it can be a little frustrating because when it dries you're like hmm this is really flat this is not what I intended so you may need to tweak your project in between layers as they dry a little bit so now that that's happened I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more of a darker color I'm adding a little bit of the yellow green here to this uh, and I will end up adding just a slight bit of the Payne's gray at some point um, just wanting to and I'm going directly into my pan too because I felt that it needed a little bit more of a power punch a little bit more of direct color versus uh, something that's a little more watered down and then I decided I needed to do that to all of them the rest of them were still a little wet so it was a good time to just kind of drop in a little bit of a darker tone to that to add a little bit of contrast and some shadow giving it a little bit more interest and not be so flat and one-dimensional I'm really enjoying the pop of green next to the pinks and the purples uh, it's just a really it feels very fresh doesn't it it looks like they're just you know in a little field you're wandering along a path and there are a bunch of pretty flowers they're kind of a cross between a poppy and a tulip 
maybe a little bit of a peony. I, you know, it's just, they're not real flowers. I wasn't going for realism. <laughs> this is really meant to be something that's fun, unique, and uh, just an exercise in just creativity again. So now we're gonna do a real watered down layer of yellow green. And you can see me blotting it off onto, uh, I'm adding, darkening up the yellow green. I wanted to test the color out there. Usually I have a swatch of a watercolor paper. I'm shocked I don't have one down. I usually always do. Uh, but this again was just playing around. So when you see me dab the heel of my brush onto the paper towel, that's me removing water from my brush because I don't want it to be overly watery. Uh, and you can see I'm just adding just some real basic leaf shapes here. You don't need to be perfect here. You can also just add color. It could be a little bit more of an abstract and very loose. Uh, in this particular leaf, it's funny, I only drew the top half of the leaf at first and then came back later on and did the bottom half because there was pink in between. And you know what? I wasn't exactly sure where I was going to go with that one, so I just came back to it later. So here you can see just adding just real small little leaves. And I wanted this to be very light because I didn't want the leaves to take away from the beauty of the flowers. I wanted them to really be more of a supporting piece to the painting, you know, versus something that was a little too much of a focus. And you know what, it's really interesting in looking at the piece that I doodled on versus the piece that I didn't. Uh, in the piece that I doodled on, I see the leaves obviously a lot more because they have definition, they have an outline. And in the watercolor piece, they just really kind of support the piece. They're a little there in the background, but the flowers are the star. So it's, it's very interesting how different they are between the two. Now you can see here, just because you have a flower in between doesn't mean that you can't have a leaf uh, surrounding it. Uh, just be careful not to touch your flower, try not to. It's okay to have a little bit of a white gap. Now this piece right here, I left this in because I wanted you to see how I troubleshooted this little spot right here. I ended up adding a little too much water and reactivating my stem. My stem was not fully dry. So that was a mistake on my part and it ended up all washing away. So I have to kind of come back in here uh, in a little bit. Once I notice that you can see the paint is starting to wick out a little bit there and kind of fixing it. And you can totally do that. So my first line of defense is to break out my heat tool. I wanted to clean off my brush there and just kind of see if I could stop that color from really running. Um, I, I recognized that it was starting to go away and that wasn't good so I needed to grab some of that sap green. I came back down first uh, and I noticed that it was really wet. So that's where the heat tool came in. Tried to dry it uh, to see if I could stop it from doing that and it still kind of wicked away a little bit. So came back in, did it again went through the same process. And you know, the one thing that you wanna just be aware of is the more you do that, each time you're adding it, you're adding more water. So you just wanna make sure you're not creating too harsh of a line there. If you are, just come back in with a clean brush like we did before and kind of scrub that away. You can see even there, it still was gone. So I took away some of that water and made sure that my brush was a little dry. Did you notice that I, dipped the heel of my brush against the paper towel and that kind of took a little bit of the water and wetness away from the brush allowing me to use a little more of a drier brush with just the right balance of water to go over that spot again water balance so crucial and then coming back in with heat so that i can set it i love how this looks it's beautiful next up we're going to actually add some little interest, a little bit of pop, a little bit of a finishing touch. You could leave it just as it is right like this if you want to sign it, frame it, cut it, make it cards, make it bookmarks, make it whatever you want. Or you can take some translucent orange and a rather wet brush and just flick. And we're just, we're not going to go crazy with the orange. Just wanted to add a little extra interest to some of those white spots. It's okay if it drops onto the flowers itself. And then right behind that, we're gonna clean our brush and go back to the Paris Blue. 
Orange and blue are complementary colors. They are on the opposite spectrum of the color wheel. And what that means is they really do pop next to each other. And the blue is such a different hue um, from everything else that's on here that it's an, providing a nice contrast to everything. And sometimes you need that. You need to have something that's different. Uh, you wanna be careful if you're not used to flicking, practice it off your project. The last thing I'd want you to do is to create some weird splatter that you're unhappy with. And if you do, just take a paper towel, put it right on top of that area and lift that right off uh, to try to minimize it. I really love the effect. I felt like it needed one more color, but really in hindsight, I think I should have stopped here. And what I did not do is something that I encourage you not to do. Sometimes when I feel like it needs one more thing, that's usually the rule of thumb to stop. It means that you're done. Uh, I added up some Payne's Gray, which is, there was nothing wrong with adding Payne's Gray. Again, it's that contrast to the piece, but I wish I hadn't. I wish I had left it just with the Paris Blue and the Translucent Orange, because see, now it's starting to get a little busy. So again, my rule of thumb always, <laughs> when you feel like it needs one more thing, you know what, it's probably good. So here is our finished piece. Um, this is before we move on to doing something different. You can, it's all dried. I can tear it out of my book. Uh, again, this book is great. You can travel with it, very inexpensive. It's uh, not intimidating because it's a manageable size, but look at that. So you can frame that, you could sign it, and but we, are going to move on to another step. We are going to now envision it as two cards. Like I said, this is half of a sheet of an A2 size piece of paper, which is 11 by eight and a half. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. And here's what I'm envisioning as two cards. You can see those actually are gonna look really nice. So we just need to cut that in half. This is a trimmer by Tonic. I wasn't sure if this cut was right, right here. So I flipped it around and it, it was more comfortable to do it that way. Don't ask me why. There's no reasoning behind that. But here's the two pieces. One is going to end up being uh, doodled on. You can see I'm kind of envisioning what it would look like if you did bookmarks. Those also would be great. You could seal them with a spray um, and they'd be beautiful bookmarks. Add a little gold embossing to them on the edges or something fun. That one to the right, we're gonna actually doodle on. But here's what it looks like if you were to cut it down and add just a sentiment as a card. That was my first project. I just, I just slightly took a little bit off the edges, three eighths of an inch, um, matted it onto a neutral base and added a greeting. Uh, it was great. And that happy birthday card, I'm gonna actually send, my, send to my mother this year because she loves it when I watercolor. And this one over here, we're gonna do this to it next. I have another video that I have linked in the description below. Uh, so if you wanna see that, def and it's also gonna be at the end here. But first, this is what I was talking about earlier in the video. See those cauliflower blooms right there? Those were not working for me. That was definitely uh, something that was unintended. So here's how you get rid of that. Purely clean brush. This is a number two brush. I'm just coming in with some water. And what I'm doing is I'm reactivating that and just kind of scrubbing it a little bit. You can see I'm kind of moving my brush in a back and forth motion. Don't overwork this. You can also just lay some color on there. And the key is to allow the water to work. Now I came back in with my larger brush because uh, I felt like maybe the, the other one was too small. And I'm glad I did. I was able to add a little tiny bit more water, but you can see how it's starting to disappear. I didn't want that to bloom out anymore so I quickly dried it and it's important when you're doing this to also dry from the reverse side remember this is uh, paper is made up of fibers you want to make sure to heat it all the way through um, I will do that eventually but you can see that really did soften it it's still there a little bit but give that water a chance to work and it will smooth itself out this ended up being just beautiful. You can see that water is still working. So that means that I haven't dried it completely. So that's where I'm talking about heating your paper all the way through to make sure that you're stopping that drying process and that it does not continue. But look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. Love, love, love. 
Here's a close up of it. Now, if you want to see the doodled process, I have another video linked right there. And I have another fun video with some great other things for you to learn um, and one below. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe. And you know what? I'm going to see you directly over in the doodle video next.